We now continue. You have the distinct honor and reputation now of having been the first African-American owned uh, automotive company to reach a billion dollars in sales. Billion dollars, that is, that is what to be. Now, I have to qualify right away when I say a billion dollars, that a billion dollars in sales is not a billion dollars in profit. So I do not have a billion dollars in my pockets. <laughs> I'd, uh, but, uh, but we are very proud of that. We are, we're very proud that not only are we the first automotive related company, uh, whether it's manufacturing or, or dealerships to reach a billion dollars in sales, but we're one of the first three African American companies in the country to ever have achieved a billion dollars in sales. Uh, the first one was um, um, uh, TLC Beatrice, and we all remember the, uh, the famous Reggie Lewis, Reggie Lewis, who was both a, uh, a mentor of mine as well as a fraternity brother, and uh, God bless him. Um, and then there's a, um, another organization, I believe it's in Kansas City, I can't think of the name of it. It's an IT company, and then it was, of course, us was number three. I think there's one or two other companies that have, have been able to uh, obtain that over the last couple of years, but we're very proud to be among the, some of the first. What do you attribute, what percentage of that do you attribute to your passion for customer service? Uh, I think that customer service um, is the hallmark of any business. Uh, particularly when you have a product that a customer can buy from anywhere. No one has to come here to get uh, the product that we have because there's another five outlets in the metro area that they can go and get exactly the same product, exactly the same color. So uh, from a customer service standpoint, the customer uh, is always right. Even when they're not right, they're always right. And we have a, uh, a mantra that we live by, and that mantra is that we create uh, magical and pleasurable experiences within our automobile dealerships. And the intent is to go above and beyond what a customer will experience if they go somewhere else. So that when they're making a choice, they, they choose something or they choose us because there's something different about us. And what's different is how we treat the customer when they come in. So what other components as an entrepreneur would you add to customer service? Is there you know, obviously conv conviction, uh, a personal passion, internal uh, um, uh, drive? Yeah, I, I think that, but, but just from a pure customer service standpoint, you have to create a trust among your customers. They have to trust you, and they have to trust that not only the pricing that you give for the products that you have, but, but what you're selling them, that it's going to work the way you say it's going to work, or if it's, if it's food, it's going to taste the way it's supposed to. Uh, and they have to trust the relationship so, so it's not unusual, whether it's myself or any of my employee team members, to see us not trying to sell a car, but help a customer buy a car. And if we help you buy a car, then we approach it differently. We talk to you about the product, we explain the product to you, and then we just let you make the decision. If we do that, an intelligent consumer would choose us because the customer service aspect of it is that we're not trying to sell you a car, we're trying to help you buy one. And there's a difference there. Yeah, there's a difference yeah there certainly there. is. So what would you add, provide as advice to anyone looking to be an entrepreneur, um, certainly including that component of customer service mm -hmm. and, and trust, but what other things advice-wise would you give to anyone interested? I, I would make two observations. Uh, the first observation would be everyone who wants to be an entrepreneur is not. So I think that we all have to not find our, our niche. You know, where, where do we fit? And and so there's, there's a skill set, and a lot of that skill set just deals with the passion to do your own thing. The passion because it's, it's fun to you, and, 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 and I think you have to start with that. If you don't have that, then um, I mean, your chances of being successful are going to be tenuous. But that passion, what it does is it creates a drive which allows you to put the work in. And, and everyone wants to be an entrepreneur, but everyone's not really w willing to put the work in. And entrepreneurship is 24-7, 365. It doesn't stop. That's right. You know, the average entrepreneur is not unusual for them to get up at 1 or 2 o'clock at night and, 
and just start making notes about what goes on the next day. Um, because that mind's always running. Because the mind is always running in terms of entrepreneurship. So it's not a part-time job, it is a full-time job. I would say um, hard work, but even more importantly, smart work. And, 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 and certainly the, uh, the customer service aspect of that, no matter what your project, product is, you've got to build trust with your customers. And, the, and, and, the, and that, that's the best thing that you can do. If you have trust, then you have customer service. Final thought then, uh, as you look forward to the future for, for Greg Jackson, what does it look like? What's in it? My future is bright. I'm still a young man. <laughs> that you are. I, I'm still a young man. And uh, I'm proud to say I've got two wonderful children. Uh, my daughter, Annika, who is a, a recent graduate of Purdue with an MBA. Uh, and then my son, who's a recent graduate of Morehouse. I'm looking for both of them to come back into the business. And I see them joining me, becoming partners in, in, the, uh, in the business. And uh, my son is not as excited as my daughter is about the business, but, um, but he'll, he'll come around. And, but I see them coming back and, and, and joining me and, uh, and really running the company. You know, it's time for them. And I see myself directing uh, what we do. There's so much more we can do but I can't do it by myself. You know, it's all about the team and you need help. So this is also my cry to them when they watch this program to come on home. <laughs> Daddy needs you. <laughs> well, I appreciate you very much. Thank you and uh, best of luck. I appreciate you so much also. Absolutely. All right, all thank right, you, sir. thank you.